and at the end of the hour, there will be some additional time for discussions that will not be recorded. So with that, uh, I think I'll hand it over to Bella to start. Bella, um, if you could share your screen. Yeah, but I think you should share my iPad, spotlight the iPad. Um, I'll spotlight you, in fact, but when you share the um, iPad screen, then we'll have uh, the screen shared and you and the, your video sort of pinned in the corner. Okay. Okay, great. <clears throat> okay, so you can all see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, so thanks a lot. Um, so I'm going to give a mini course on uh, mixing and heating times for Markov chains. So first of all, I would like to give a quick overview of what I'm going to cover. Oops, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to cover results from three different papers. So the first one is going to be equivalence. Up to constants. Between mixing times. And heating times of large sets. The second one is going to be uh, just about heating times. And um, I'm going to discuss a result uh, which is about a comparison uh, when a um, comparison for different sizes of sets. And the third topic I'll discuss is going to be refined mixing and heating equivalences. So um, one thing I want to emphasize is that all of these topics, of course, are related to each other. However, even if you miss something in one proof, it's not going to be used uh, later, most likely. Similar ideas will be useful, uh, but uh, they will, the proofs will be kind of independent. Okay, so also on the website, I posted a two-page note with some background that it would, help, it would be helpful for people to be familiar with. Uh, so like basics for total variation distance and um, uh, how one can upper bound total variation distance by coupling. Uh, so now I'm just going to uh, set up some notations. So I will recall some things from this two page note, but uh, I, the main reason is just to set up the notation uh, to use it throughout the course. Okay, so um, I'm going to be talking about Markov chains. So X is going to be an irreducible Markov chain. And the Markov chains that I will be considering will always take values in finite state spaces. Let's call it S. And let P be the transition matrix. Of X. And I'm going to be writing PTIJ for the probability starting from I that XT is equal to J. Oops, there is a bit of delay. For all IJ in the state space S. Uh, so because the Markov chain is irreducible, which means that you can go from any state to any other state in a finite number of steps with positive probability, and it takes values in a finite state space, uh, there exists a unique invariant distribution. So pi is going to be the invariant distribution 
which means that pi is equal to pi b. <clears throat> and if x is also periodic, then it's classical that the transition probability between ptxy converges to pi of y as t goes to infinity, and this is true for all x and y. Uh, so what the mixing time tells us, it tells us about the rate of this convergence. Okay, um, okay. so the mixing time tells us about the rate of this convergence. And, um, but in order to talk about rate of convergence, we have to define the right notion of distance that we'll be considering. Uh, so the distance that I will be using is going to be the total variation distance. So let me recall the definition. So suppose that we have mu and nu be two probability distributions on the set S, then the total variation distance is defined to be the maximum over all subsets A of S of the absolute value of mu of A minus mu of A. And I'm going to write D of T for the total variation distance from stationarity between the matrix P to the T when I take the worst starting state. So it's going to be the maximum over all x of ptx dot minus pi. And I'm going to define now for any epsilon in 0, 1, the mixing time t mix of epsilon is going to be the first time that the total variation distance from stationarity taken over the worst starting state drops below epsilon. Okay, and um, in this uh, course, I will be writing T mix when epsilon is equal to a quarter. So T mix is going to stand for T mix of a quarter. Why we choose a quarter is arbitrary. Um, so quarter is arbitrary. All we need is for epsilon to be strictly smaller than a half because after a half, the total variation distance from stationarity decays exponentially, uh, exponentially fast. Okay, so that's the mixing time. And uh, let me also recall the definition of reversibility. So X is called reversible. Uh, so uh, the definition is that x is reversible if when started from stationarity, um, whether uh, it runs forwards or backwards in time, they look, uh, we can't tell them apart. Uh, so uh, running the Markov chain backwards or forwards in time, the two look it is, uh, statistically indistinguishable. Uh, and this condition is equivalent to saying that for all x and y, pi x times p x y, is equal to pi y, p y x. These are uh, called the detailed balance equations. Uh, so in this course, I'll mostly be talking about reversible cases, reversible chains. Um, and um, in some cases, I'm going to also discuss uh, non-reversible chains. Uh, so this is, um, these are the main definitions I wanted to to write down. And um, before I write the first theorem, uh, let me also define this quantity that I will denote by th of alpha to be the maximum over all starting states x and all sets a of measure at least alpha of the expectation starting from x to hit a where tau a is the first time that the Markov chain hits the set A. Okay. So 
Now I can state um, the first equivalence that I talked about earlier, um, which is a theorem proved independently by Roberto Oliveira. and Paris and myself, and both of them in 2012. So actually, let me also add one more definition here because I'm going to use it for the theorem. So um, here I wrote above that if X is also periodic, then we have convergence to equilibrium as time goes to infinity starting from any starting state. Um, but um, sometimes the changes that one considers are not a periodic, so there is an issue. Uh, but in order to overcome this issue, so in order to overcome periodicity and near periodicity issues, uh, we will always consider the lazy version of a chain. So in my talk, I'm always going to be considering the lazy version, even if I don't mention it sometimes. So what do I mean by the lazy version? Lazy version of X. Uh, I mean that um, every, uh, whenever X is at a state X, it stays there for, it, it's, uh, sorry, at the next step, it either stays in place with probability half or with probability half, it chooses a state to jump to according to the transition matrix P. So the transition matrix P of the lazy version is going to be the original plus the identity divided by two. Okay, so the first theorem is the following. So for all alpha strictly less than a half, there exist positive constants C alpha and C alpha prime such that for all reversible lazy Markov chains, we have that C alpha times TH of alpha is upper bounded by T. This is upper bounded by C alpha prime times TH of alpha. Okay, so uh, let me go over the theorem. Um, so what the theorem states is that for any fixed alpha, which is strictly less than a half, I'll talk about the half in a little bit, uh, there exists positive constants C alpha and C alpha prime. So these positive constants are universal for all reversible finite Markov chains that we also make them lazy. So that the mixing time, so T mix of a quarter is upper bounded by one constant times the maximum heating time of sets of size at least alpha and lower bounded by the other constant times the same quantity. Okay, um, so sometimes I will be writing, instead of um, writing that there exists positive constants C alpha and C alpha prime, I will also write T mix up to constants T H of alpha, where uh, up to constants is going to mean, depending on the context, it's going to be that uh, there exists universal con uh, constants so that for all Markov chains or if it is for all values of n, um, the constants are the same for all values of n so that T mix is upper bound by one constant times the other quantity and lower bounded by the corresponding thing. So, and here these constants also depend on alpha. Uh, so in this theorem, uh, because of the way we proved it, the constants that we obtained C alpha and C alpha prime uh, exploded as alpha approached a half. But um, uh, the theorem is still true even if alpha is equal to half, and I'm going to discuss this um, in the next lecture. Okay, so um, what uh, my plan for today is um, to prove uh, this theorem modulo some technical results that I'm not going to prove. Uh, but before we prove it, I would like to discuss um, a little bit about the theorem and uh, the conditions and also some previous results. So um, the first thing I want to say is that the lower bound in this theorem, that the mixing time is at least 
the maximum heating time of sets of some substantial size alpha. This is the easy direction of the theorem. And uh, intuitively, it's clear that this should be the case because if we know that if there is a big set and we know that we haven't hit it, then clearly we cannot be mixed. Uh, the, other, the other bound that the mixing time is upper bounded by this quantity so that if we, uh, so if you look at the expect time to hit large sets, um, then by this time you must be mixed. So this is a non-trivial direction and uh, this is where all of the work goes. So uh, let me first, maybe first now, let me present the proof of the lower bound. Okay, so let me just write that T mix is greater than or equal to C alpha times T, oops, T H of alpha. So I'm going to take alpha to be equal to an eight, uh, both for the lower bound and for the upper bound. Uh, it's just a choice to make things, uh, to make the calculations easier. Okay, so let's take T to be equal to the mixing time of precision one over 16. Then the first claim is that this is upper bounded by three times the mixing time of a quarter. Um, so this follows easily uh, using the almost submultiplicativity of the function d of t. So I did write um, I did write this uh, submultiplicativity property for uh, what I wrote I defined as d bar in my two page note. Uh, and then using this, one can easily show that uh, d of t is almost multiplicative, we lose a factor of two. And, um, and so then it's easy to show that the mix of one over 16 is upper bounded by three times t mix. Okay, so uh, since t is equal to t mix of one over 16, it means that at this time we are mixed. So this means that for all x and all a, ptxa, is greater than or equal to pi of a minus one over 16. This is the definition of uh, the mixing time of one over 16. And so if we now take a with pi of a greater than or equal to one eighth, then we get that ptxa is greater than or equal to one over 16. And this is true for all x. So this is good news because now starting from x, we have probability 1 over 16 of being in A after time t, at least 1 over 16 of being in A after time t. Uh, now, if we are not, if we failed, then because this lower bound is uniform over all starting states x, we're going to use it again. We're going to perform an independent experiment and check whether we are in A after t steps. So this means that we can upper bound tau a, the first heating time of a, by t times the geometric of parameter 1 over 16. And so this now implies that the expectation starting from any x, so let me just write max, overall x of tau a is upper bounded by 16t. And so this is the end of the proof. So that's the lower bound, which is um, the easy direction. So um, before I move to the proof of the upper bound, um, I would like to mention uh, a previous result due to Aldous. So Aldous in 82 showed the following. Again, the assumption is that for all reversible, lazy Markov chains. He showed that T mix is equivalent to the maximum over all X and A of pi of A times the expectation starting from X of tau A. So uh, to be precise, he didn't prove it for lazy Markov chains. He proved it for continuous time Markov chains, but uh, it's uh, uh, the, but the mixing time of a continuous Markov chain is at constant equivalent to the mixing time of a lazy Markov chain. So his result, um, so what I wrote uh, is basically what he proved. So um, again, this symbol here 
means that there exists universal constants, C1 and C2, so that for any reversible lazy Markov chain, the T-mix T -mix is upper bounded by C1 times this quantity and lower bounded by C2 times the same quantity. Uh, so now if we look at the, this expression here, the max overall X and A of this product, then we see that if A is a set which is big, so by big, I mean that pi of A is going to be large, then it shouldn't take long to hit A. So pi of A is large, on the other hand, the expectation is small. If A is small now, then pi of A will be small, but then one would take long to hit it. So the maximum of this expectation over all starting states should be uh, should be large. So the two uh, balance out small times big and big times small, big times small. Uh, and then the question is, uh, where is this maximum actually attained? And so the theorem that I stated above, so let me actually write theorem one so that I refer to it later. So this theorem uh, says that actually it is attained in a, a large sets. And uh, of course, the lower bound that I showed, it also follows um, trivial from his uh, result. Okay, so uh, that was um, a result due to Aldous from 82. And uh, I'm going to come back to the work of Aldous in a little bit when I talk about the proof of the upper bound. Uh, now I want to go back to the theorem and discuss uh, the assumptions. So, remark. Reversibility is essential. And I'm going to write an exercise. So let's consider a biased random walk on Zn um, plus laziness. So what do I mean? Uh, the bias I'm going to take, I'll just write it here. So this is Zn, and then this is i, i plus one, and i minus one. So with probability two thirds, we go up, and with probability one third, we go down, uh, and then we take the lazy version. So this is p, and then pl is going to be p plus i divided by two. So show, for this Markov chain, that the mixing time is up to constants n squared. However, for any alpha, th of alpha is of order n, because um, the chain has a positive drift to the right, so it takes linear time to hit any vertex. So, so this gives a counterexample to to the theorem when the chain is not reversible. Okay, so that was the first remark. Now the second remark is about the values of alpha. So before I said that the constants explode as alpha goes to a half in the theorem, uh, but um, the theorem is actually true for alpha equal to half, and I'll discuss this later. However, the theorem is false if alpha is strictly greater than a half. So, if alpha is larger than a half, then the theorem is false. And so, as an example, this is exercise two. Uh, so I'm going to uh, draw two clicks on n vertices. Oops. Okay, it's not perfect. Okay, so here is one click. And I'm going to join them by an edge. So we have Kn 
and KN joined by merge. So two clicks on end vertices joined by merge. Show that T mix is up to constants n squared and TH of alpha is for the n if alpha is greater than a half. Yeah, so I, I'm just looking at the chat now. That's right. So the lower bound doesn't require reversibility. This is true for all Markov chains. If we have, because it just relies on the fact that if we haven't hit a big set, then uh, of course we cannot have mixed. The upper for the upper for the upper bound reversibility is important. Uh, and for instance, this example here shows that the lower bound, of course, it's still true. Okay. Um, so. Okay, so now I'm, I'm going to uh, start talking about the proof of the theorem. Theorem one, upper bound. Okay, so um, as I said before, I'm not going to present the whole proof. I'll just Perla. leave some technical parts. Uh, yeah. But the first thing I need Sorry, to do Perla. is, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, would you want to have a two-minute break uh, before uh, starting? Actually, it will take soon? two minutes to define the mixing time at the okay. time. So we stop at exactly half past. Excellent. Okay. Um, okay. So. Um, I'm going to define another notion of mixing. So I defined the total variation mixing before. Now I'm going to define what I call mixing at a geometric time. So what do I mean by that? Let Zt be a geometric random variable of parameter one over t taking values in one and so on and independent of the markov chain x so we sample a geometric random variable with mean t uh, and it has to be independent of the Markov chain and now define d g of t g for geometric to be the maximum over all starting states of the total variation distance between the law of x at time z t started from x minus the invariant distribution so what am I doing here? I'm sampling the Markov chain at an independent geometric time, which has mean t, and I'm looking at the distance to stationarity. And now I define the geometric mixing, Tg, to be the first time that this total variation distance drops below a quarter. And this is what I will be calling the geometric mixing. So I think it's a good moment to take a two-minute break now. Okay, thank you. So if there are any questions, uh, feel free to ask on the chat and we will resume shortly. Um, the random walk, yeah, so uh, for exercise two, that's right. So it's a simple, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, whenever I draw a graph, I just think of a random walk, a simple random walk on the graph. So whenever you're at a vertex, you pick another vertex um, with equal probability among the neighbors. 
So here, when you walk on this click, um, from here you can go to any of the other points, but when you're here, you can also jump to the other click. Yeah, that's right. So for exercise two, uh, the problem is that you have to cross uh, this narrow bottleneck in order to mix. So that's why it takes time and squared. Um, okay. So there's another question in the chat. Uh, is it expected that one could find a bound in terms of mixing times for maximum overall sets of the of the square of the heating time? So, um, so I'm not sure. So a question from Leandro Chiarini. So so why do you look at this? Why we, what is the significance of the square of the heating time? And yeah, so regarding geometric, um, I, I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain um, exactly why we need uh, the geometric. This is coming. Um, okay. So, yeah, I'm just thinking about the square. So, I guess uh, if the mixing time has an exponential tail, then then the kth moment in general will be comparable to the kth power of the expectation. But so in the last talk that I'll talk about the refined equivalence, which is a result due to Basu, Perez and Her uh, Basu Hermon and Perez, um, I'm going to relate mixing times to the tails of um, hitting times of large sets. So this might be... <coughs> okay, so perhaps we continue. Okay. Okay, great. So I continue here. Um, so yeah, so why we consider geometric mixing um, as Jonathan already wrote. Um, so Okay, so I'm just looking at Leandro's question. Uh, so right, so if heating times are concentrated around the mean, this could be useful for cutoff. Uh, but then also the result of Jonathan that I will discuss later uh, is going to be very useful. Okay, so let me go back now. Um, so why geometric? Uh, as Jonathan already wrote, um, it's important that uh, the geometric has the memoryless property, and this will become clear in a little bit in the proof. Um, now, um, why parameter one over t? Because we want a so instead of looking at the Markov chain at time t, we want to look at it at a random time which has expectation of order t or t. In this particular case, it's t. Now, um, I want so uh, maybe some people are familiar with the, the so-called notion of Cesaro mixing time. So uh, what this is is if instead of z t here being geometric, we consider a uniform random variable. So remark, if instead of geometric, we take ut to be uniform on one to t, then um, this gives rise 
zum Gottesnamen zu sagen. So again, in the same way, we sample the Markov chain at an independent uniform time, uniform in one to t. So in this case, it has mean t over two, and we look at the distance to stationarity, and we define uh, the Cesar mixing time to be the first time that the distance to stationarity um, drops below a quarter. So this is the, um, the Cesar mixing time. Um, Okay, now um, one nice property that the geometric mixing time possesses, which is not true for the Cesaro mixing time, is the fact that dg of t is decreasing as a function of t. So exercise, I guess it's number three. So, g of t is decreasing in t. Okay, so now I'm going to write one theorem, theorem two, that for all reversible chains tg is equivalent to t mix again here i mean that the constants are universal for all reversible chains and theorem 3 And again here, let me also write lazy. Even if I don't write, I will almost always consider lazy uh, chains. Uh, theorem three is that for all chains, so no reversibility, uh, so let me just write. Yeah, okay, so for all chains, Tg is equivalent to Th of alpha for any alpha less than a half. So now let's go back to the proof of theorem one. So this is immediate from theorems two and three. So now I just want to discuss uh, theorems two and three. So about theorem two, I'm just going to give some ideas later, but I'm not going to present the proof. Uh, and the proof of a uh, theorem two um, uses um, uses tools that were developed by Aldous and Lovas and Winkler. So Aldous, and I'm going to talk about them a little bit. So Lovas. There is a question whether theorem three needs to be lazy. Okay, and Jonathan is answered. Um, Okay, no, it doesn't have to be lazy because here we consider the geometric mixing and um, and the maximum hitting time of large sets, so there is no issue with either of them. But we may as well take it to be lazy, but we don't have to. Okay, so um, let's, uh, so now um, I'm going to prove theorem three and then I'm just going to discuss uh, some ideas about theorem two. So proof of theorem three. So um, we want to show that Tg is equivalent to the maximum heating time of large sets of size at least alpha. Uh, and uh, so there are two directions. First, that uh, Tg is at least this Th of alpha. And the other direction is that Tg is at most uh, this th of alpha times some constant. The lower bound um, that tg is greater than this quantity follows in the similar way to what we saw earlier. So this is, I'm not going to do it, the fact that this is up to constant lower bound by th of alpha, again this symbol means up to constants. This is easy. 
So now we prove the other direction that Tg is upper bounded by constants depending on alpha, Th of alpha. Okay, so, so how are we going? We want to show that uh, the geometric mixing is upper bounded by this quantity. So what we want to show is that if T is less than Tg, we want to find the set B And let me again take here alpha to be one eight to make the calculations easy. So we want to find the set B with pi of B greater than or equal to an eight, such that the maximum overall X of Tx tau B is greater than or equal to theta T for some positive constant theta. Uh, uh, yeah, this is also a lazy walk, but I'm going to be taking, okay, Jonathan will already respond. I'm going to be taking alpha to be equal to half. Okay, I'll stop looking at the chart because it's distracting. Um, okay, so we want to find the set B, uh, which has measured at least an eight so that the maximum heating time of the set B is at least theta times T for some positive constant theta. Uh, and of course, this is going to be enough because if we show that for any T strictly less than Tg, um, then we have proved the theorem. Okay, so, so let's use first the assumption that T is less than Tg. So this means that the chain at time Zt is not yet mixed. So it means that there exists a starting state Z and a set A so that the probability starting from Z that X Z T is in A is less than pi of A minus one over four. So why is that? Um, let me see if, yeah, okay. So I'm scrolling up now. So we defined the total variation, the geometric mixing to be the first time that this quantity drops below a quarter. Since we are at the time T, which is less than Tg, oh, it has a bit of delay. Uh, since T is less than Tg, it means that at this time we are not mixed. So the total variation distance is strictly larger than a quarter. So there exists some z and some a, so that the absolute value between pz minus pi of a is going to be larger than a quarter. So uh, this means that there must be a set a satisfying this, because if the set a that satisfies that this absolute value is greater than a quarter gives you the opposite inequality, then you can just take a complement and it will satisfy the inequality that I wrote. Okay, so um, because this is less than Tg, at this time we are not mixed, so there exists a starting state Z and the set A satisfying um, that the probability that we are in A after Z steps is less than pi of A minus a quarter. Now from this inequality, we automatically get that pi of A is greater than a quarter. So we have already found now a big set A with measure at least a quarter. Uh, but this is not going to be the set B that we are looking for. However, it's going to be used in order to define the set B. So um, how are we going to define B? The idea is that even though starting from Z, we are in A after Z steps with small probability, because A is a big set, it can be the case that, most start, that a lot of starting points would be bad for A in this sense. So let me define B to be the set of points Y so that starting from Y, the probability that after Z steps we are in A is at least pi of A minus an eight. So there are two things uh, we want to prove. The first one is that pi of b is indeed a large set, so it has measured at least an eight. And the second thing we prove is that it satisfies this condition here. 
So why is pi of b large? So it's for the reason I mentioned um, a minute ago, because a is large and pi is stationary, it must be the case that b will be large. So let me just write it. So we know that pi is equal to pi b. So this means that pi of a is equal to the sum of rho y in b of pi of y, p y, x, z is in a, plus the sum over all y not in b, in the complement of pi of y times the probability p y x z t is in a. And this is using the stationarity property together with the fact that z t is an independent time. Okay, so here I'm now going to bound uh, this, these two sums uh, on the right by the following. So if y is in b, I'm just going to upper bound this probability by one, and then the whole sum will be upper bounded by pi of b. And for y not in b, this is upper bounded by pi of a minus an eight, and the rest I will upper bound it by one. So pi of a is upper bounded by pi of b, plus pi of a minus an eight. So this implies that pi of b is greater than an eight, which is what we wanted. Okay, so now we have found a set with big measure and we want to establish that the maximum heating time of B over all starting states is at least theta T. So I'm going to prove the second claim by contradiction. So we will prove that assuming Ez tau b is less than or equal to theta t for a suitable constant theta that uh, we will write explicitly what theta is after we do the calculations leads to a contradiction. So let me say again, I'm going to assume <coughs> that the expectation starting from Z, remember Z is the bad starting state. So starting from Z, the probability that we are in A after Z steps, oh, there is, okay. The probability that we are in A after Z steps is upper bound by pi of A minus a quarter. So what I want to show is that assuming the expectation starting from Z of tau B is less than theta T, and I'm going to find the right value of theta that is going to lead to a contradiction. So why is it going to lead to a contradiction? Because uh, how is B defined? B is defined as a set of points so that starting from there, we have a substantial probability of hitting A, probability at least an eighth of hitting A after Z steps. So if we were to hit B quickly, then starting from there, we would also hit A quickly, but Z is a bad starting state for A, and so uh, the fact that we would hit A quickly starting from Z is going to contradict uh, this assumption on A and Z. Okay, so um, now let me, um, so now we assume this inequality. So now by Markov's inequality, we have that the probability starting from Z that tau b is greater than or equal to two theta mt for some m to be chosen later, a natural number, is going to be upper bounded by one over two m, just by Markov's inequality. So now um, I'm going to, now I'm going to get to the contradiction uh, for the point z. So the probability starting from Z that X Z T is in A. I'm going to show that by choosing the value of theta and M sufficiently large, uh, sorry, the value of M sufficiently large and theta is going to be uh, small, we're going to get a contradiction to the fact that Z was a bad starting state. 
So the probability of X that being in A is going to be lower bounded by the probability that X Z is in A. And I'm just going to add some more events. So Z greater than or equal to tau B and tau B is less than or equal to two theta MT. Okay, so now I'm going to condition and multiply that is greater than or equal to tau b and tau b less than two theta and t. And now here we are going to use, um, so far we haven't used anywhere that z is geometric, uh, but uh, this is going to be used here uh, because Now this probability is going to be lower bounded by the minimum overall y in B of the probability starting from y exit being in A by the memoryless property of z, z t and strong Markov At tau b. So we apply the strong mark of property at the first hitting time of b and so that's why and also the memoryless property of uh, the geometric so knowing that the geometric hasn't run, run by time tau b uh, we can just start afresh now starting from the set b and so we can lower bound the whole thing by the minimum overall y in b of the probability starting from y to being a after z steps. And so now we can lower bound using the definition of b by pi of a minus an eighth times, and now I'm just going to lower bound this probability here by saying z is greater than two theta and t and tau b is less than two theta and t. The reason I do that is because I want to decorrelate the two events because uh, Z T and tau B, Z is independent of the Markov chain, so Z T is independent of tau B. So this now is equal to the probability time from Z that Z T is greater than two theta and T times the probability Z T tau B is less than two theta and T. So. Uh, using uh, Markov's using this inequality here, so by star, we get that this upper bound, lower bound by pi of a minus an eight times z is geometric, so it is one minus one over t to the two theta and t times one minus one over two m. And so for two theta and t larger than one, this is lower bounded by pi of a minus an eight times one minus two theta m times one minus one over two m. So now choosing theta to be one over four m squared, we are going to get that the probability starting from z that x times z t is in a is going to be lower bounded by pi of a minus an eight times one minus one over two m squared. And so now taking m large enough, shows that starting from z, is greater than pi of a minus a quarter, which is a contradiction. And this completes a proof. Uh, so uh, Jonathan wrote it earlier, so that's why I thought I had said it. Uh, I just want to emphasize that the idea of using the geometric mixing was suggested. So let me just write it here. Idea of geometric mixing. Is due to the charm. Okay, so um, let me just go over the proof 
uh, towards the end. So what we showed is that um, if we take M sufficiently large, then this lower bound here is at least pi of A minus a quarter. And so this contradicts the choice of Z, that Z was a bad starting state for A if I scroll up here. And so this gives a contradiction. So the contradiction is that the expectation starting from Z of hitting B has to be greater than theta T for this particular value of theta that we took. Theta is going to be one of four M squared and then for the value of M that makes um, this quantity larger than pi of A minus a quarter. So, um, and so that's the end of the proof. Oops. Okay, so uh, how much time do I have? Well, you can take a few more minutes. Uh, okay, okay, so um, now I just want to go back to theorem two. Let me just uh, recall it for you. So the statement is that for all lazy reversible chains, the geometric mixing is equivalent to the total variation mixing. So I'm not going to present the proof of this, but I just want to um, explain um, how one proves such equivalences. And as I said, um, similar equivalences were proved by Aldous and Lovas and Winkler. And um, the proof of their equivalences uh, usually go through the notion, another notion of mixing, which I'm going to denote as T-stop. So what is T-stop? This top is defined to be the maximum over all starting states H. And then we take the minimum of the expectation starting from X of lambda X, where lambda X is a randomized stopping time. I will explain in a second what I mean by randomized. Such that the probe is starting from X, that X at lambda X is somewhere is equal to pi. So first of all, what do I mean by randomized stopping time? So everybody knows what is a stopping time for the Markov chain. Um, so it means that um, the event lambda x less than or equal to t is in the filtration uh, generated by the Markov chain x is in ft. Now, when I say randomized, I just mean that this filtration is enlarged, it could be enlarged, and it could include extra ran additional randomness. Um, so, a lambda x might also involve um, using some extra uniform random variables, and uh, of course, it is a stopping time with respect to x as well. So, um, what is this definition? So, we are taking the worst starting state x here, and then we want to find a stopping time, run, which is a randomized stopping time in the way I defined, which achieves stationarity. So the mark of change starting from x, at time lambda x, it is distributed according to pi. And we want to find the stopping time, which has the minimum expectation among all such stopping times. So um, this is not at all obvious that stopping times achieving the minimum exist. Uh, but first of all, the fact that stopping times achieving stationarity exist, um, this is obvious because, for instance, you can take um, the following stopping time, pick a random state according to the invariant distribution and wait until you hit it. Then, of course, when you first hit it, you're going to be distributed according to pi. The fact that uh, there exist stopping times achieving the minimum is not obvious, and there are uh, constructions of different stopping times that do achieve the minimum. I'm not going to go into detail, uh, but uh, I have written a two-page note that I can post on the website for people who are interested uh, to learn more details. So in this note, uh, I discuss the filling rule which is a stopping rule, or when I say stopping rule, I just mean a randomized stopping time. Um, and its construction goes back to, oops, sorry, to Baxter and Chacon in 76. And it was also used by David Aldous and Lovas and Winkler. Um, so, 
Um, theorem 2 stated that uh, this stop is equivalent to the total variation mixing time uh, when the chain is reversible. Again, reversibility is essential here. Uh, and so let me just rewrite theorem 2 uh, for reversible. T stop is equivalent to T mix. Uh, and uh, what I want to say is that the lower bound, by which I mean the fact that T stop is upper bounded actually by A T mix, this is easy. The hard direction is to show that T stop is at least some constant times T mix. And uh, when I say T stop is less than A T mix, this is easy. Uh, so this could be an exercise. So prove that for reversible chains, T stop is upper bounded by A T mix. Um, and in order to prove that, hint, use separation distance. to define an appropriate stopping time. And uh, I'm going to write a more detailed exercise uh, in the note that I will send about the filling rule. Uh, of course, the filling rule is not essential to show that the stop is at most 80 mix. Uh, the filling rule just tells you that uh, there exist stopping times that achieve uh, the minimum in this definition. Okay, so I think um, it's a good point to stop for today. Thank you, Perla. So we will unmute everyone to uh, thank Perla now.